Hey, this is Joel. I'm here with my good friend, Jerry, and also, I guess, uh, my other good friend, Nick. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. You're, you have you're more than one good friend, friend I think. I, I think yeah, I have, I have two really good friends. I mean, we're and, in different parts of the country, so I think you can have one per, like, continent or something. Oh, right, yeah. You're my American friend, and Nick is my British friend. That works, right? Well, anyway, welcome to this video. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to power the WLAN Pi. Uh, Jerry has a few different use cases to show us, like batteries, USB, POE splitters, uh, that really cool little box by Ubiquity. Uh, and Nick and I are going to ask Jerry some questions, maybe give some comments and things like that along the way. And so without further ado, uh, Jerry, what, uh, what's your favorite way to power the WLAN Pi? Ooh, favorite way uh so i would say my go-to way is actually something like this so like using this a out. poe splitter yeah so um take out the cable that normally comes with the wlan pi which is this nice USB C cable if you want to do kind of a direct power or power it off, you know, like a local battery pack or something. Um, but if you're leaving it behind, you know, I just keep one of these in my kind of data closet, um, you know, server rack. And uh, this is nice. It's just, it's just constant power, reliable, um, provides plenty of power output. I don't even know what this does. Probably like, oh, 12 watt uh, output, 2.4 amp. Um, yeah. I have a question though. It seems as though like that is something that you've you've actually undone the you've unboxed the case. So this is oh. so this POE solution isn't this you'd actually have to take the case apart for this one for this solution to work. Now I have seen people do it outside of the case and keep the uh, the cable and use an adapter, um, but this actually fits nicely inside here. So without any modification to the case other than opening it up. Um, this actually just has the micro USB connection for the power. So you just pull out the cable that was in there, uh, put this in there, and this has a nice little kind of loop uh, to go into the ethernet port on the one end, micro USB on this end. And this, uh, an important factor on this, uh, I actually have two of these. They are not the same, even though they look very similar, uh, same connections and everything. If you look really closely, you probably can't see it on the camera there's not enough wires inside this guy to do gigabit. This is actually a 10100, uh, even though they look pretty much identical, they're slightly cheaper and it's a 10100. So you wanna make sure if you're gonna be doing like throughput testing that you get a PoE splitter that does uh, gigabit uh, throughput on there. Um, so yeah, this is just nice if you're gonna leave it behind, obviously not as maybe portable and stuff as uh, if you're, you know, what your use cases are, but, uh, you know, this is definitely nice to have at least one of these that, you know, if you're just going to keep one plugged in 24-7. Okay, okay. Just, to so, just oh, no, I'm going to jump in. Just, I just wanted to say there, with the opening up the case, that was a choice that you made, but you can get micro USB to a USB type C connector and, it, and you could theoretically power it without taking the case apart using a POE injector. Yep. Yeah, you can get creative. Obviously, you know, this is the normal kind of connector on the uh, WLAN Pi that would have either USB-C or, um, or the USB-A, and that you could use an adapter then that would go into a different POE splitter um, that either might take might take one of those connections automatically, or you could get an adapter so that way it becomes like a, um, a female uh, micro USB connection that we plug in uh, that way if you don't want to open up the, the case or, you know, kind of modify it in that way. So Jerry, can I just say that as the guy that, that designed that, you know, the case, seeing you plug in the, uh, <laughs> that splitter, it just makes my heart hurt because it just breaks everything. <laughs> it just looks terrible. I'm glad it works though. It's a cool workaround. Like I'm really, really stoked that it works. So, okay. So POE, I think we should talk more about POE, but before we jump really, really deep into the POE stuff, um, what are the three main, like what are the three ways that, that you can power a WLAN Pi? Like what are the three most common ways that you can do yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good point. I don't, I don't think a lot of users are doing the POE method. That's just kind of my favorite, but I'd say it's more of a niche way of, uh, of powering it. Um, honestly, I probably more frequently power it non-POE when I'm out in the field with it um, because this is, yes, certainly more of a, a cleaner setup and you don't know if you're going to have POE or not. Um, so yes, just having something more like this out in the field, I would say is more common. And then what you're going to do to power it as really, I mean, this is super versatile, right? This is just your standard five volt, just same kind of thing like what are you going to use to charge your phone, right? Same kind of concept of, you know, where can I plug my phone in? How can I charge my phone? 
that's the same concept of this. If, if you can charge your phone off of something, you can basically power a WLAN Pi off of it, which means, um, you know, even taking like uh, a wireless controller here, a lot of networking gear has a USB A port on it. You could power it off of that. You know, it's not necessarily intended for that, but you know, any of those kind of things will provide that five volt, as long as it does at least one amp of output. Um, but I would say if you're looking for uh, a battery pack to power it up with, like something like this, um, this one I really like, it's 4,000 uh, milliamps, which you know means that it's gonna power it for a really long time, basically all day. Um, and this has uh, a two amp output, 2.1 amp output. So five volt, two, pin, two uh, amp output is, is ideal is what you wanna look for. But you know, something as small and thin and light as this. And the cool thing about this is this is pretty much the same size as like the WLAN Pi. You could use some Velcro or something like that and just strap that to it. And now I can plug that in. And now I've got my portable you know, battery pack. You know, I can hold it in my hand. I can plug in Ethernet cable to it um, and be moving around with it. If I, you know, depending on what my use case is. All right. So you can use USB to power it. Basically, you need an, about an amp. That's what you think you need to power WMI. You need at least one amp. Um, most of the things that you would be doing with the WLAN Pi do not draw more than one amp. The biggest thing that you need to um, need more than one amp for is if the Wi-Fi adapter is going to be put into a transmit mode. That's where it tends to really jack up the power draw um, when you've got that Wi-Fi adapter also transmitting. Um, if it's just doing packet captures or sniffing, um, there's very low power draw, but as soon as you put that adapter into either like a hotspot mode or like the profiler uh, does packet injection, which means it's transmitting frames, um, that means that uh, it's going to exceed that one amp likely. So to, to uh, for better stability, get a, get a power source that's going to provide at least two amps. Um, if you have more than two amps, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, but yes, uh, at least two amp is ideal. Gotcha. Okay. So we've got USB power, which could be literally anything that provides USB, whether it could be your wireless LAN controller, your laptop, yep. uh, a phone charger, um, anything, right? As long as it provides at least an amp, you're good to go. Yep. Um, second would be a battery. Uh, and the, you had the, the model there that you really like because it's about the same footprint. Do you just like rubber band it to the WLAN Pi or what, what do you do there? I've actually taken some of that 3M Velcro stuff. I don't have it on this particular one, but one of my WLAN Pi's, I've got some of the 3M Velcro like on the side and on the back of it. Actually, uh -huh. this one does. Yeah. So you can see this has that 3M Velcro on there. That's just that kind of harder like Velcro stuff that just kind of clicks together. Um, yep. I'll just put a strip of that on the battery, click it together. There's, there's Nick's uh, advanced I guess you could, uh, solution. Yeah, you could use uh, graffiti bands as well. Uh, That's right. What is a graffiti band and why are, so, you, why are you damaging other people's property, Nick? <laughs> so a, a, a graffiti band, G-R-I-F-I-T-I, -I -I, uh, these were rubber bands that I found on Amazon.com. I couldn't find them in, in the UK at the, when I ordered these, but they are silicon rubber bands, but they come in lots of different sizes and shapes and they're much more durable than the traditional rubber bands that I would find attached to my post when it gotcha. got shoved through the door. Yep. Okay. All right. So we talked about USB. Um, we talked about batteries. Uh, that We talked about PoE splitters a little yep. bit at the, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Any other comments that we need to make on the PoE splitter? I would say just the main thing on there, like I mentioned, is making sure if you're going to go the PoE splitter route, make sure you source a splitter that has gigabit. Um, make sure that's mm -hmm. in the title because, yeah, not all PoE splitters are, are, are capable of doing gigabit. It may power it perfectly fine, but then you go and do a speed test and you're only getting 10, 100 speeds on it. Um, so, yeah, that would be the only kind of caveat with that. But, yeah, just decide if you want to do that kind of internal connection that I was showing you there um, that's not as, uh, you know, a appealing to, to Joel's eyes. Um, but uh, the other option is to do something like externally. So that way you can kind of make it more temporary and, and, and plug it and unplug it. But yeah, or just, you know, you don't have to go the PoE route if, if you prefer to um, just use some type of USB, um, even like, a you know, I've got like, a, like, you know, a USB, uh, what are those called? Like a splitter kind of thing that just, it's all it does is power, but it's got like five you know, USB outputs, you know, I use those all the time too. I've got one of those in my rack to power up various things like a Chromecast audio and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'll just plug a WMPI into that and power it off of that too. 
Now, you also, earlier, you had, uh, you had another PoE to USB device by Ubiquiti. In fact, I think it's just sitting mm, in the background yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. Good, uh, can you yeah, talk good. about that a little bit? So this one works great as well from a powering standpoint. The downside of this, so this is a 5-volt, 2-amp. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on there. I yeah, yeah, can see the writing. You can't read it. Yeah, we'll five volt two amp it. output. Um, it uh, it's you know eight hundred two AF compliant, uh, eight hundred two dot three AF compliant, and it uh, does yeah it, it does the power properly. But the downside is is there's no data. This is power only. Um, so this is great to power it up, but then you need a second uh, you know Ethernet cable for the actual data if you're going to be doing wired. If you're just using it from a wireless standpoint, you're going to put it into hotspot mode or whatever, um, then that's fine to, to power it and uh, do, do some of the functionality with it. So that, that box appeals to me because it's not requiring the opening of the case. Good point. But is, yeah. that the, is that the only PoE breakout that you know of with a female USB port or are there others? Uh, there, I know I've seen others in the past. I can't uh, say I own any of them or uh, I'm very familiar with them. But if you search around, you know, some of these PoE suppliers, they do uh, make some of those. But yes, this would be a nice external PoE powering setup where then you're just using two Ethernet connections, right? One for one to do power, one to do data. Yeah, and that, that kind of appeals to me, obviously, because of my earlier stated distaste for using the PoE splitter. <laughs> But what, the other thing I think that gives you, though, is that means you can have one WLAN Pi and easily swap between PoE power or powering from your laptop or from a battery without having to actually like physically take apart the WLAN Pi. Yeah. So I can see a, a little bit of an advantage there. Well, Should you we just talk have about, multiple WLAN Pi's and then you're probably I mean, solved. obvious. That's the obvious solution is to have you know a battery <laughs> powered one, uh, a laptop powered one, and all the WM pies, right? Yeah. Um, maybe last thing we should talk about for a minute is um, USB C or or USB A. Um, do you guys have any any thoughts on that? I don't know if we've talked about the little. I think we did a little bit at the beginning. We talked about the the little adapter that comes. Oh yeah. From the WM pie. Yep. Yeah, so this adapter is pretty handy um, for connecting it to, you know, whether you're on a latest and greatest computer that has USB-C or, you know, one that's still using a type A connection and obviously for battery and battery powering and everything as well. But yeah, what, uh, that's a good point. Like the USB side of it is, is unique in the sense that this isn't just for power. Um, one of the things that's unique with the WM Pi is this does both power and data. And what I mean by that is when you're getting started with this, you'll find out uh, one of the slick use cases is you can plug this into your computer. It'll not only power it from your computer, but it'll also create a uh, virtual ethernet connection between your laptop, uh, your iPad Pro, you know, whatever you're plugging in as the host device, it automatically tries to create a, uh, an ethernet connection, whether you're using a MacBook, Windows, um, iPad, as I mentioned, like all those, it, it, it's able to create this virtual ethernet connection. And that gives you a lot of uh, accessibility from your laptop then to now connect to the WLAN Pi and do all sorts of uh, fun things with it through that connection, through that virtual ethernet connection. So it's a single cable. Gotcha power and data over that. No so ethernet, not the, cable, ethernet cable needed or anything. Not the focus of this video, because that one warrants a video of its own, but it's an important thing to think about when you're, when you're considering how to power your WLAN Pi. Do you want to have e virtual ethernet access through the USB cable? So something yep. to think about. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else that we need to discuss regarding power? Um, I think for this, this uh, episode, I think that's good. Uh, you know, we just wanted to talk about just different ways to power this thing. Yeah, what's no. the question? Uh, how, question. <laughs> how, how long does it normally take for a WLAN Pi to start up? And is there a difference between the first time you start it and subsequent times? Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, when you first power it up, I'll plug into the battery here and we can kind of keep an eye on it, but uh, we should see it. Um, the screen light up once it's powered up. But yeah, the first time you power up the WLAN Pi, uh, you know, right off, you know, r as soon as you've received it, it does have a longer boot cycle because it has to expand the image and things like that. It does some initial kind of um, startup things. Um, but then afterwards, uh, it takes about, I don't know, I'd say like 30 seconds or less uh, to boot up. Okay. And there you go. You can see it's, it's the basically, reason as soon as you've seen that screen come on, that's it's finished the boot cycle and everything's up and running. The main reason I ask that is that I've fallen foul of 
being impatient a couple of times where mm. I've assembled a, a WLAMP Pi, powered it up. And then if, if it's all I'm doing and I sit there and wait, that 30 seconds seems to be longer. And then I think, oh no, did, did something go wrong with the burning the image? Uh, is there something wrong with this Neo Pi in the, you know, in the, in the unit? So 30 seconds roughly is a expected boot time. After the initial boot. Yeah, I'd say the initial boot, I would give it at least, you know, two minutes. If it's taken longer than two minutes, then something's not right. Um, you know, gotcha. Something didn't go right. But yeah, anywhere from like a minute to two minutes on the initial boot. And then after that, 30 seconds or less is is pretty standard. Obviously, that's going to depend on your, your memory card. And um, for the most part, that should be about the only factor there that would change that timing. Um, but yeah, some okay. memory cards obviously have faster read and write speeds. One other point I would like to make too is uh, if you've given power to your WM Pi and you can actually tell whether it's receiving power or not well before the screen comes on. Mm, yeah, we didn't point. talk about that yet, did we? No, uh, we I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt all. to show it on the camera here. Yeah. So we'll see we'll see if I can if I can pull it off here. You should uh, flex those or those focus. Yeah, focus my, my, skills. my manual focus. Yeah. And so what I'm gonna do is is if you look right right about there, you see that little notch right there? That little notch, it shows the power. And there's an activity LED in there too, right, Jerry? It's there's actually, they'd consider it a heartbeat. So it actually looks like kind of like a, a, a heartbeat, heartbeat kind of blinking. And okay. what that's telling you is that the um, OS is initialized and it's, it's booting and running. Um, if you're just getting the power light, the solid power light and no heartbeat, then that uh -huh. means something is, you know, either corrupted or the memory card is faulty or, you know, for some reason something the, the like operating that. system isn't loading. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to connect power here. I'm going to attempt to do it while showing you guys everything. Uh, it's very very faint, but you see that little red light down in there. Mm -hmm. I think I can see so it, yeah. now we know. Okay, the WLAN Pi, and you kind of have to look at it. There we yep. go. And so there there's we the go. heartbeat. Now we can see so, it clearly. Yep. And and notice that we haven't. We're not even close to having a screen on yet. Yep. And so if you want to know, it, you know, do I basically have power? Does it look like it's booting? then that's a really nice quick indicator. There we go. And there's Josh's picture right there and it's nice. done. So that, that's just a nice quick way to know whether your WM Pi is starting up successfully or not. Yep. Great. Cool. I did not know that with a heartbeat. I, I didn't either, no. I genuinely the, learned something, the, which the is a lot more than I expected. Show. Yeah, I did not expect to, to actually learn things on this. So I feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say that's, you know, we, we got to wrap it up there. Then if we learned, learned you something new, that's, that's a good place to end it. Excellent. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this video. Uh, Nick, Jerry, you guys can say goodbye if you want. Uh, but uh, yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> See you next video. Bye now.